Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I'm going to explain what is a recessive epistasis is and this video would be interesting for those who breed dogs and want to know more about how color inherited in this particular breed and also for all students who study genetics and want to know what is a recessive epistasis. The code color in this breed is under the control of two genes and the first one is a gene B which produce pigment and regardless whether it is dominant or recessive so I put a blank space for the second one second allele but if it's going to be dominant E and again it doesn't matter what the other allele is going to be this genotype means black color so as you see it can be for example capital B here or small b here, capital E or small e here, it doesn't matter, all these genotypes would produce black pigment which would be deposited in the uh, hair shaft. So gene B produce this color and gene E is um, enzyme which helps to deposit this pigment in the hair shaft. But what if we are going to have for example two recessive alleles B and dominant allele E, at least one dominant allele E and the second doesn't matter and as you see this recessive allele B is not as efficient to produce black pigment as dominant allele. So two recessive alleles means that this is going to be a brown color and at least one dominant allele E means that it's going to be deposited. So we are going to see this color in dogs if the genotype would be as follows. Now what about yellow coat? No matter what alleles dog have, whether it's going to be dominant or recessive, two recessive or two dominant alleles, if both alleles E are going to be recessive, that means that uh, this pigment is not going to be deposited in the hair shaft and the color of the dog is going to be yellow or closer to white. Actually you can find more than three colors in this breed. For example you can find also silver, you can find chocolate, you can find white color but I'm going to use the simplified example in order to make my video short. All those shades of color would be receiving if we add one more epistatic allele here. So what epistasis means? That means that one locus can affect how another locus would be expressed. Epistasis literally means standing upon. Now let's imagine double heterozygous black colored dog whose genotype is going to be capital B small b and capital E small e and imagine that we cross it with another black colored dog whose genotype is going to be the same going to be double heterozygous so capital B small b and capital E small e genotype. So parent 1, parent 2. So how many different gametes parent 1 can produce? Gametes are haploid so only one allele from each allelic pair we can find in the gametes. So the first variant would be capital B and capital E. So capital B, capital E. Second variant would be capital B and small e, capital B, small e. And next variant would be small b, capital E, small b, capital E. And the last variant would be small b, and small e, small b, small e. Parent 2 has the same genotype. So parent 2 is going to produce the same variants of the gametes. Let's list them here on the side. Capital B, capital E, capital B, small e, and small b, and capital E, and small b, and small e. Now let's build simple Punnett square. So we are going to have a square 
with four rows and four columns. So one, two, three, and four. So here we are going to list all the possible genotypes, deployed genotypes of the progeny of the parent one and parent two. So capital B, capital B here, capital E, capital E here, capital B, capital B here, capital E, small e here, capital B, small b here, capital E, and capital E here, and capital B, small b here, capital E, small e here. Next column, capital B, capital B, capital E, small e, capital B, capital B here, small e, small e here, capital B, small b here, and capital E, small e here, capital B, small b here, and small e, small e here. Capital B, small b here, capital E, capital E, capital B, small b, capital E, and small e, small b, small b, and capital E, capital E here, and small b, small b here, capital E, small e here. And the last column, capital B, small b, capital E, small e, capital B, small b, small e, small e, small b, small b, capital E, small e, and small b, small b, small e, small e. Now let's circle different genotypes which produce different phenotypes. And for example, the first one, this animal is going to produce black pigment and it's going to be deposited. So uh, the color of this dog is going to be black. Second one is also going to be black. This also going to be black. This also going to be black. Black is going to be this genotype. What about this genotype here? Black pigment is going to be produced by both alleles, but it's not going to be deposited because both this E alleles are defective. So the color is going to be yellow. So let's circle with different color. Next one is going to be black again. This genotype means black, but next one is going to be yellow again. Black genotype, or this genotype means black phenotype. Now what about this genotype? This recessive allele B means that not a sufficient pigment would be produced as by dominant allele. So color is going to be brown and it's going to be deposited. So let's circle with brown color here. And the same true for this genotype here. What about next genotype here? As we see, dominant allele B, dominant allele E present here. That means black color of this dog with this genotype. And what about next one? As you see, one dominant allele is present, but it's not going to be deposited. So that means that color, code color of this dog is going to be yellow. And next one is going to be brown. And the last one is going to be yellow. Now let's find what ratio we are going to get as a uh, result of this dihybrid cross. Usually from your textbooks, you know the ratio of um, dihybrid cross is going to be nine to three to three to one. But what ratio we are going to get when we have recessive epistasis and dihybrid cross. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blacks, uh, dogs with black color, so nine. And how many we have yellow? One, two, three, four. So let's put four. And how many browns we are going to have? Three. So let's put three. So as you see, this ratio is very different from this ratio. But if we add all these numbers, we are going to get 16. 
and here we're also going to get 16, but the ratio is going to be, as you see, different. Now you know how color in Labrador is inherited, and you also know what is recessive epistasis. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.